G'day everyone and welcome to episode 11 of the Battleforge Gaming Podcast presented by General Games. I'm Background Mike, I've got BFG Justin with me. G'day guys. And today we are joined by our special guest, Kale. Greetings. Welcome Kale. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Let's get the like and sub in there really oh, early. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, for everyone watching uh, live, can you please like and subscribe? It helps the channel out massively and uh, helps grow our audience. I even leave a comment as well. Yeah. That, that helps a ton. Yeah, any we comments? Had, <laughs> we had a big chat before getting, you know, slaughtered for the podcast and I was like, got to remember that like and sub. I don't know if you had thought about it, but... Not at all. Well, no, we not, got it, we got not it at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> you needed to do a bit of a... Hey, Mike, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> well, I, I hardly just remembered. No, that's okay. So uh, how's everyone going? How have you been the last couple of weeks, Justin? Um, painting Tyranids. Painting lots of Tyranids. So week... I think it's week three. No, it might even be more because we had Naz on and then I started painting the Tyranids. So, yeah, still going... Probably about halfway. Haven't lost my mind yet. Haven't how, do you, lost my how do you feel about them in like, because I know you're normally a Blood Angels guy. Yeah. How is it like painting them as opposed to the Space Marines? Well, it's, it's actually quite funny. Darren Latham put a post up on his Instagram the, the other day and he yeah. was talking about how he stays motivated with painting. And he suggests that you have one highly detailed project that you do, whether it's a display model or doing an army to a very, very high standard. Mm -hmm. And then you have another one that's of a lower standard that you can paint a bit quicker and you're getting results faster that helps you keep motivated and you switch from one to the other. So I'm finding the Tyranids are sort of doing that for me in a way because mm -hmm. I am seeing results really quickly. Painted a Screamer Killer in like 15 hours or something like that, which for me is... Like, I wouldn't even complete one that's of my, fast, my yeah. Blood Angel Marines, so... Okay. Yeah, especially a model of that size, like, mm. that's got to be pretty satisfying compared to the usual slog. Yeah, yeah, so I'm def I'm enjoying it, uh, for sure, I'm enjoying it, but I am also missing the Blood Angels a lot, so mm -hmm. I can't wait to to get back to those guys and finish off my Stern Guard squad, and then I'm thinking some Assault Centurions. I can't Ooh, get my cool. mind... Yeah, can't get my mind off Assault Centurions. I don't know why. I just yeah. I've I got have... a I've got a bit of uh, Centurions from because I used to, my original Space Marines before Blood Angels was uh, Crimson Fists. Yeah. And uh, the Imperial Fist there for a hot minute. The Centurions, Bolter Centurions were all the. Were rage. good. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, they're such a cool model. Yeah, I I had some previously. I I'd, I'd painted them as Iron Hands, but I haven't seen them as Blood Angels yet mm. with the yellow helmets, and that's that's. It's really... such a weird thing that they don't. They can't have a captain. A centurion captain? Yeah. yeah it's so you annoying. Can't, you can't attach a but character. They're like one of the only troops that can't have a character join them. Yeah. And I don't know if there's any auras you could benefit from either. But they're pretty good by themselves. Yeah, yeah, they're so. pretty good. They're pretty good. Yeah, that's that's what I've got planned. Can continue with the Tyranids. Hopefully have them done well before Dreamhack so we mm -hmm. can get everything else sorted. The tables, the lighting... The, the streaming setup, all that all that type of stuff. Speaking of DreamHack, Kale's actually going to be one of the guys that helps us yep, at DreamHack. So yep. we've got a few of the, the Battleforge gaming community helping this out. A, this is a preview of the DreamHack crew. It exactly. is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. So yep. we've got Marvin as well and Tiny and Mrs. Oh, cool. Tiny coming oh, out. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah awesome. That, that's gonna be, oh, and Mark. Don't forget Mark because he's playing the Tyranids. Yeah. Yeah, right. So that's going to be... The Battleforge Gaming Dream Hack Crew. Are you coming? Awesome. Is are you coming, Em? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Background, Em. I was trying to coax a little oh. reply out. <laughs> That's the quietest I think she's ever been in her life. <laughs> <laughs> you want to remain an enigma? Yeah, okay, cool. Yep, yep. Cool. Yep. Wrapped in a mystery, I like it. There's actually no one behind any of these Yeah, no, no, we're just cameras. talking to the camera. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I like it. So, yeah, that's what I've been up to. So, more more Tyranids. More Tyranids tonight and potentially maybe on Twitch tonight. We'll see Ooh. if we can get the setup right for the Twitch stream and the TikTok stream at the same time, which we are. That is a fantastic segue. It is a fantastic, fantastic segue. Fantastic segue. Yep. Seamless. Yeah. So mm -hmm. right now, guys, we are all uh, hopefully streaming live to Twitch and to YouTube. 
background M's giving me the thumbs up. So we are live on Twitch right now. Uh, that's going to be a transition that we're hopefully going to make permanent. Uh, so It'll be permanent for sure. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Yeah. We're going to still do TikTok stuff mm -hmm. and Twitch at the same time. And we'll just see how everything goes. And it should it should really help push this towards, you know, becoming more for mm -hmm. Battleforge Gaming. Yeah. So it's very vague. <laughs> it's very vague there. Yeah, so the new the new uh, status quo, I guess, is going to be Twitch for the live stuff, mm -hmm. like uh, Justin's live painting, yep, yep. live battle reports, hopefully in the future, the live podcast, and then anything edited from that is then going to get pushed to YouTube um, so people that miss out on the live can still watch, watch it back YouTube. nice yeah, and cool. easily. Uh, and then Justin's going to simulcast, simul stream. Simulcast, multi, it is. No, multi stream to impressive TikTok as well, I think. Yeah, I did a lot of Googling before this one. So. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, so that's, that's right, isn't it, Justin? You're going to keep, keep, the keep the TikTok core going? We'll keep the TikTok going. So the good thing about YouTube... Yeah, I'm leaning he's, in here. He's learning. My cup down. So the good thing about YouTube is we can talk about multiple different social platforms okay. and they don't... Like, yeah, they don't <laughs> shut they don't shut you down. Not like TikTok. Okay. So TikTok, when it works, it works really, really well. Mm -hmm. If if I'm hitting the algorithm, which who knows how you hit that? Sometimes I do a post and I'll get ninety people in chat, and you make a whole bunch of new followers. Yeah, right. And then other nights, it's like seventeen people, just consistently seventeen. It doesn't really go above that. Which for when you've got fourteen thousand followers, doesn't always make sense mm -hmm. but we'll keep tiktok because it can be a benefit but we also do twitch so we'll try and get everyone to migrate as many people as we can to twitch that is that is the idea and okay get subs over there because financially it makes more sense for battleforge gaming yeah we get ads which we can benefit from mm -hmm. we're not going to pepper people with ads we're going by what the the guys chatted to us about they recommend that we use about four minutes of ads in an hour. Okay. We could, you know, I think you said it yourself. They were saying there are some people that do 20 minutes of ads in an hour, wow. which is just, uh, I think, taking the piss. That's a quite great frankly. way of get, getting no followers. Yeah, losing yeah. your whole community. Uh, yeah. Do they do like any sort of, um, like do they make, tailor the ads to like what, what you're doing. I'm not sure. Yeah. YouTube does. I yeah. know that for a fact. If you go over and look at our videos, you'll get stuff like the Tacticus, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like mobile game, game ads. Yeah. Or Total so, War or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about I'm not sure about Twitch. Oh. Yeah, I think a lot of I think a lot of those companies are doing smarter advertising where they are more targeted based on the user, but mm. we haven't we really this will be this live stream right now is our first foray into Twitch. Into so. Twitch. I did a sneaky one the other night. Sorry, oh, my, yeah, on my, my phone. first foray into Twitch. Yeah, I did a sneaky. Oh. I did a sneaky, <laughs> I did a sneaky on my phone. But oh, I see how it is. Yeah, yeah. I didn't set it up right, so it was it was it wasn't good. Yeah, <laughs> tonight would be better. It would be better. Yeah, but yeah, the Twitch the Twitch thing it's kind of cool. From what we've learned, um, we got to have a meeting with uh, one of the content developers from uh, from Twitch. Cool. Um, so we got to have a chat and sort of ask any questions that we had prior to, to joining the platform. And I think the biggest thing for me was like subscribers don't have to watch those ads. So mm. if you're a subscriber, it all goes ad free. If, if Justin triggers an ad or if we trigger an ad, you don't have to sit through that. You just mm -hmm. keep, keep watching the content. And um, if you have Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, Prime, yeah. 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 You, get a, you get a free sub. Yeah. Free and anyone sub. who's watching this and doesn't use their Prime should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Should come over to Battleforge Gaming. Mm. All, all one word. Yeah. 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 If you've got yeah, if you've got Amazon Prime, that's a free subscription that's Amazon pay for. Mm -hmm. And you can yeah, you can watch your favorite content creators ad free. You get I think yeah, one free subscription well, per yeah. account, isn't yep, it? Yep, yep. And I think you can renew it every month to the Prime one, which yep. is really cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's big news. Yeah, it's exciting. That's awesome. It's exciting. Well done. There's a lot of potential there, especially because 
we actually got approached by yeah by by Twitch to to come on over and, and give it a go as well. So that's so cool. I think that's a, a compliment in itself, and that came from the guy that is running DreamHack in Melbourne. We oh, found wow. out. Yeah, we didn't actually realize at the towards the end of our meeting, he he, he asked if we were going to DreamHack, mm-hmm. and we're like, yeah, we're actually we're. We're we're in DreamHack. Mm. Yeah. We're part of DreamHack. He's we like, are oh. DreamHack. he's like, that's right. The the guy from DreamHack passed your name on. Oh, cool. So our meeting must have must have gone down pretty well. Yeah, awesome. That's so great. good job, Mike. <laughs> it's always a team effort for sure. But Definitely. Yeah. So may as well. Well, what's Carl been up to? Yeah. What have I been up to? What have you been? Up I to? have been in nostalgia land for like the last month and a bit. Because um, the old world has emerged. Fantastic. And that is literally my first entry into the hobby was that this, the addition that they're sort of basing the old world around. So um, I've just been working on my dwarves and just been super pumped and just going through them and, um, and I can't wait to get some games in. But um, other than that, I've done, I'm working on some Soul Black Grave Lords for AOS. And then Blood Angels and Gene Stiller Colts for forty K. Nice. Yeah. You got a bit bit happening at your place. Yeah, yeah. Well <laughs> because I run the club and everything, it's good to have like heaps of things. So if people want to come play, they've got enough armies to choose from. Oh there. nice. Yeah. Good yeah. one. That's fantastic. Yep. So that's what hobbying I've been doing anyway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Loving loving the nostalgia so far. Oh loving it. Yeah. Oh, and two, I was I've been putting because our um, our local general games in Frankston yep. supports the club. And uh, they donated a bunch of um, last editions AOS stuff, like the box sets for for the guys to um, put together and and paint up for our miniature painting night. So that's been really cool. That's, that's amazing. Awesome. Was that Ooh. the the box with the night haunt in it? Yeah, night haunt yeah. versus um, stormcast. Stormcast. Yeah. yeah, that's a cool box. Very cool box. Yeah, I was trying to like say to the group, like, "Hey, we should assemble these gold guys. How cool do they look?" And they're like, "No." The ghost stuff. I'm like, Damn it, I'm <laughs> gonna do that. But anyway, love hear about love hearing about like hobby stores supporting the mm. community. So that's shout out to General Ga- Games Frankston. General Games yep, Frankston, yep. doing good things. Yeah, mm-hmm. doing good things. Another reason why we've got them as our sponsor. Just good, good, good group. Oh, of people. they're good people. Yeah, yeah. they're great. Yeah. And that new store is on its way in Churnside Park as well. Awesome. Mike and I work at a company that does signage mm-hmm. and. We installed the signage the other day no for, the, way. for the now How coming. No way! How funny is that? Yeah, so yeah, we so were out funny. there the other day installing. So it's got some graphics. opening, pretty snazzy opening soon. Yeah, signage on the windows now in Churnside Park, which is a. So if you want to go touch a sign that Justin's touched, just go to the windows of yeah. General Games. That's it. General I Games, like it. Churnside Park. Yeah. <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> or, or anywhere about around Melbourne. He's been there. Yeah, 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 There's a lot years. of sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch but of people walking up to cars and just feeling them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like I've, it. I've been doing. I've been working with Justin for three years, and I think I drive past a hundred signs every day that he's had a hand in. So yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right. So, what is the Kale origin story? So Kale we touched. Origin. on... I do. I do like origin stories. I I'm, love them. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for someone to come in and be. The, the person that found the hobby themselves because most of the time we have people coming and be like, oh, my friend showed me, oh, my, my friend's older brother. Okay, yeah, I found the hobby myself. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's, it's not Damn me. Damn it, either. we'll get him one yeah, day. Yeah, one day. I can fake it if you like, but no. <laughs> my, um, no, mine started with uh, my mum was a massive nerd for Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And so I used to read that and The Hobbit and stuff to us when we were growing up. So we already had it. My mum was too. Yeah? She loved The Hobbit. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah. So we already had an affinity for fantasy and stuff like that. And I remember we were at Pov growing up. And uh, so we'd go window shopping at the local toy shop called Frank's Toys. In I remember North. Frank. I remember Frank's story. Hey. But it's where the hobby store is that we get our Tamiya from. Oh, is that oh, where no. it is? That's where. Yeah, right. So yeah. I used to walk there, and over a weekend we'd peruse through the shops. And at the time, like, I think I was like eight or ten or something like that, and I was into um, airplanes, like the model planes and yep. stuff. Yep. So because I didn't know Warhammer existed at that point, so I was like walking around, and then my brother saw oh wood elves because he was 
he had a massive um, affinity for the elves. And so he bought this little box of like archers, just the base archers, and brought it back. And we saved up all our pocket money and our um, thing. And I, and I was into the dwarves straight away. I was just like, because I, I saw, I used to get the White Dwarf magazine and I just thought the, the dwarves were awesome. And um, I sort of got one model and I think I had this runesmith um, or rune lord or something. And I'd made up my, my own sort of rules to play a rune lord against a packet of basic archers from wood elves <laughs> um and because i was the oldest it went fine for me yeah um but yeah it wasn't a very fair game what, but you, what, what cows here goes exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two up re-roll will save <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> absolutely um so and then i sort of died out um i remember that's when i was turning into teenagers trying to get i was starting to get into like sort of a rough sort of scene mm. and um i remember i was looking um for a game shop in Ringwood because I went, I, I went there to have a shot and I was like, I was looking for something else for a present and Games World used to be right next to Games Workshop there in Ringwood and I saw the Games Workshop I was like, what is this? There's stores for this? Just a store of miniatures. It's not just like some <laughs> random shelf in Frank's Toys. This actually exists and I was like, whoa, and it blew my mind and that was like, I think, fourth edition fantasy. It was just before... Bretonian Lizardman box set came out. And I think 40K at that point, I remember seeing you could buy all the box sets, like the Space Hulk and Epic and 40,000. And, and I think that was the one with, um, oh, what's his name? Typhus, I think, is on the, oh no, what's his name? The, the Blood Angel dude. It's got Tycho. 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 Yeah. I think Tycho is on the front of the, of the box set. Yeah. Um, versus some orcs and stuff. I think it was second or third edition. Yeah. But then I was just enamoured with it. And it was actually thanks to, like, those sort of games that I sort of stopped with all the bad scene and started painting again. And Yeah, right. And, yeah, the, the hobby sort of saved me from a lot of, of, um, of things because I think during high school, now having an autism diagnosis later in life, I realise now that a lot of my struggles um, were because of that. And if you look at sort of high school, um, it, it, like your social importance or social status is never more important than in high school. Yeah. It's a like blowed out of proportion, right? And so with people on the autism spectrum like myself, you, that's where you're most distant from the rest of the world. You know, you're, you have the most difficulty with social understanding and that's the... The, the most important it is in your life. So it's where you feel sort of most segregated and, and much more of a minority. Um, and that was sort of manifesting into, you know, yeah, kind you of crappy become, behaviour. become very alienated and everything. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It, when everything's so much harder for you to achieve yeah. um, than everybody else it seems to be, it just becomes hard to maintain that motivation to keep on doing it. Yeah. So, but then also I'm a nerd. So, like, when I found Games Workshop, I was just like, well, this is, this is what I do now. I've found my thing. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. And a great segue into why I think the hobby is important and why I speculate that um, or ASD and, and neurodivergence is not really a minority in the hobby is because it's so accepting um, and it sort of embraces any weird and wonderful people, which I think is awesome. And it's why later on when I started my club, I wanted to steer people um, on the spectrum, neurodivergent people, to the hobby because I think it's a great outlet um, for creativity. Yeah. Um, for myself, um, like meditative pra practice is really talked about um, and I can't meditate. I'm just boring. Like sitting on like ocean music and sitting there, no, thank you. But <laughs> I, but when I'm miniature painting, that's meditation, right? Because the world goes away for ten hours. You yeah, everything there. goes quiet. Yeah, and and so I was like, oh, this is such a great thing. I want to share this with other people. Um, and so yeah, that's sort of how the club came about. Yeah, and it's working amazing. Yeah, fantastic. So. Could you, yeah, could you explain to us and those listening mm -hmm. what, what the club is that you've started? Because yep. obviously we've touched on a little bit now, but yep. yeah. So. Yeah, so it's a, it, basically what I wanted to do is set up a, a social group for people living on the spectrum to uh, like create opportunities to create meaningful relationships um, 
and really just create a safe space where everyone's the same. Because when you're a minority, you're always in a world where everyone's different to you and there's very few that are like you. And it's weird when you get into a circumstance where you sit in the room and everything that's normally weird is completely normal and how that makes everybody just feel relaxed. And yes, I have another space where usually it's their home and home becomes sort of a... It's a safe space, but at the same point, it's really bad for you because the world becomes more and more scary as your home becomes more and more safe. Yeah. So having a space where you can go somewhere else, have people be like you, that was the idea behind the group. And then also to get them into hobbies which they can immerse themselves in. I think, um, you know, for some neurodivergent people like ADHD... Having busy brain when you're trying to go to sleep is annoying as hell, right? But if you're into Warhammer, you can be creating army lists in your head. You know, it's not just painting, but you're like sitting there going, oh, what if that goes with that, that goes with that? Mike's yeah. smiling is that at you. Mike's, no, that's, nah, so oh, that's you. <laughs> My, Mike's smiling at me because I, I've, I've thought about getting tested for, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for ADHD or any mm-hmm. form of the spectrum because... That is literally what I do when mm-hmm, I go to mm-hmm. bed. So I can sit there and I don't even need to go to bed to do it, but I paint models in my mind mm-hmm. and I know exactly how they're going to look before I paint them, mm-hmm. which is fantastic for my, my painting because it really helps with my, my colour schemes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very, very rare for me to take on a model and not know how it's going to look at the end. Cool. So, well, you know what? My diagnosis came not from me seeking it out. It was totally by accident because two of my children uh, have ASD and when we're getting them tested for it, because you have to get funding and all this kind of stuff to get extra help for them. And I'm doing the test and I'm like, that's me, that's me, that, that, oh crap, that's me. And I was like, okay, I better get this checked out. And that's how I got my diagnosis because people from our generation, we just didn't, it was just, you were just weird. Well, yeah. I was, so <laughs> you know, you weren't you weren't anything but weird. Yeah. So this is going to obviously this is going to be a main topic of what mm-hmm. we're talking about in this podcast, and um, we're not here to try and offend people. It's yeah, all yeah, coming yeah. from a, a you know a, a place of wanting to to make this um, much more aware to the community. Exactly. So I, I agree. I, I went to school, and there were kids that. And I was friends with them. Mm-hmm. You were just like, they're a little bit strange. Mm-hmm. They're running around the schoolyard and they're pretending to be an Ibis. Mm. And I was just like, that's a little bit weird, but he's a nice guy. So at that stage, yeah, people didn't really get diagnoses when I went to school. Mm. You are just like... Oh, I think a, ADHD was just different. coming in. Yeah. ADHD was starting to become a sort of thing in the 90s and stuff like that when I was in school. But yeah, the... Um, it's great that it's now... I think, I think we're in a stage now where autism is accepted as a thing. Like, it's not... What's that? You know, a lot of people know that it exists There was the a community. stigma behind it for a while. For sure. So I think we got to that stage. Now it's about... You know, the, pr- the problem with us being um, introverted naturally as people is that there's not a lot of spokespeople yeah. that can be like, I am autism, you know? Yeah. Because people think it's like, you know... They think it's the Big Bang Theory, you know, like that. Who's the main guy? What's his name? Sheldon. Yeah. Or, yeah. They think we're all Sheldon. We're not all Sheldon. There's levels of it. Do you know what I mean? So That's why it's called a spectrum. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, I think the more people that get out there and they can see, oh, actually, you know, autistic people are just people too, but they just have certain things that um, are hard for them, like lights, uh, sound sensitivity, all these different things. The more I'm, I most definitely get sound sensitivity with with some things. Yeah, M- mind you, I think I've felt I've found ways to sort of deal with it a bit more, or I'm I'm a bit uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I've I've just found that I can manage well, quite well. What like, you mean to say is masking. Yeah, and, and that's what our generation learnt to do really well. Yeah, unfortunately, that's got a life expectancy on it, because at some point you'll probably collapse into yeah. a pile of heap. And it's, yeah, you know, and the reason for that is it's not great because you're faking all the time. Yeah, um, just so people are aware, I'm not faking when I'm on. <laughs> I'm not faking when I'm on screen. I'm not saying I'm, that. Yeah. No, no, you're, yeah, you're, you're definitely all out. Um, 
But but you know what, masking is good in a lot of ways too um, for people to adapt to small situations because we're now having the sort of reverse effect now with this next generation where they're accepting of everything and they expect you to understand all the different intricacies of, of social life and, you know, gender and all different things. They're really accepting. But the downside to that is you don't develop skills to cope. Um, so... We run, uh, like, on top of, like, the hobby, like, Warhammer and stuff like that, we run D&D, which is a great experience for people to role play. Um, and teaching that role play is really teaching you how to mask in a positive way that you and mask really big at the start and then start to bring it back so that you can feel comfortable with only just a little mask, not a great big one. Um, because I think, like, if I look back on all my teenage years, I just had a giant mask in front of me that when I was out and about. And then, For sure. You know. I've started to think <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I did the same thing. I was mm. almost extremely extroverted. Mm -hmm. Me trying too. To, mm -hmm. Trying to, I guess, be popular with people. Not so much like I had to be popular, but, you know, I was like, oh, everyone else is doing this. Mm. I should be doing this. When in actual fact... I'm far more comfortable painting my models oh, for sure, by yeah. myself, helping people. And it's, it's a weird spot to be in for myself because I do very much like to, to help people, but I am naturally a little bit introverted. So yes, this is, this is more about pushing. I don't think this is so much masking. It's about getting out of my comfort zone because it's, it's good to make people aware. Oh, for sure. But also I think you're doing it in a great way because if you're now interacting with people outside, there's an association with something you love also. So people that love the same thing, you've always got something to talk about. Yeah. So everyone you have on the podcast or that you meet a dream hack or whatever, you've got something to talk about, which is, again, part of the club. The idea was to come around and have a game on the table and we're going to play something. And you can engage with the game or not or talk to other people or hide in the rules because um, for autistic people, having a rule set around you is like some nice safe walls because otherwise a social encounter is a nightmare because I don't know you, I'm meeting you for the first time, I don't know anything you like, you don't know anything I like, this conversation could go anywhere and your face is moving and ah, uh, you know what I mean? But if you sit down at a table and, and I start telling you the rules, you're like, okay, cool, 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 cool. And then I can look up every five minutes and go, oh, hey, how are you? Yeah. Or like normally I'll be joking about things that I know are common interests with us all, whether it be hobby or fantasy or something like that. Um, I also find I love talking to people on the spectrum about their interest because you see their face light up and there's no limit, time limit to how long you can talk about an interest subject with someone on the spectrum. Yeah. They yep. can just go forever. Yep. <laughs> and, um, and it's really cool to see that in them and then to see, because they're in a safe space, and most of the people on the spectrum like the right stuff because we know what's good. So one will say, hey, I like fantasy. And there's at least three people in the room that go, which type of fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it sort of starts from there. You know what I mean? So, um, and the reason why I wanted it in person is because there is another sort of problem that's birthed in our community with uh, video games. It's great, again in a lot of ways because it creates that immersion and opportunity for you to experience a world outside of the outside, especially when it's too nerve wracking and all that kind of stuff. But the downside is, you know, if, if I don't like you and we're teamed up together, I just go, oh, mute. Disconnect, yeah. Or I can go, ah, uh -huh, your mum, blah, blah, and then like I can do whatever I want and there's no repercussion. So it creates this terrible habit of you testing out these social things and also I find a lot of people on the spectrum have been bullied or know they're a minority by this stage and then are sort of using the internet as a weapon to return fire and I think you develop some troubling social habits if that becomes more of your life it's always good to have be accountable for what you're saying and I think being at a space where you're opposite other people um, if you're a dick, they're going to be like, hey, you're a dick for saying that, you know, and that makes you be a better person um, and makes you adopt the right social skills. It's almost like the internet then becomes an unsafe space 
because there are no repercussions and things like that. Exactly. Whereas like there has to be sort of a balance between action and For reaction. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Whereas yeah. with internet, you can you no, can do nothing. things. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, and you just mute or go next or And vice versa, things can be said the other way where the other person doesn't see how it affected you and Absolutely. All those sort of things. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely see what you mean there, how, mm. how video gaming online and things like that can become a, a dangerous situation for people. And you, can you imagine how addictive that is to be go from a situation where you're socially awkward, totally. you don't talk to anyone, and then now I'm the best at this game, so God now I'm alpha, power. and I just go, oh, you want to be on my team? Sucks to be you, beep. You know, yeah. And it just creates these massive problems. Yeah. Um, because it's just too tempting. You know, yeah. you can imagine, you know, it, it's just too tempting. Luckily, I'm terrible at video games, so I never encountered that problem yeah. myself. Um, same here. Yeah, oh, well, <laughs> the same goes for games too. And so, like, I never win 40K, but that doesn't stop me from enjoying it. <laughs> you know. As long as your army looks good. Yeah, well. Well, do you know what's fun? Like, you were talking about how I, I admire the fact that you can sit there and have motivation to do, um, like... Painting competition standard, painting competition standard, painting competition. I can't do that. I always have, like like what you were talking about before with the, um, what's it, Darren Latham's Darren Latham, comment. yeah. I often do that. Like I've got a piece that I'm working on now for a painting competition and I did the airbrushing and stuff and then haven't touched it because the dwarves started and I'm like, ah, screw it. I just want to do 20 Thunderers in a day. Like I just want to smash through them and just do, I like doing just a bit above tabletop and getting a nice big batch of something done and then go back to doing a leg. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, again, this touches on the spectrum. It's probably something worth me getting looked at. Mm. I've got hyperfocus. Like, yeah. I, can, I can easily sit there and paint Blood Angels. Like, if, we didn't, if I didn't have to paint Tyranids for Dreamhack, I could have easily just continued just going through Blood Angels until I've got, like, 6,000 points painted of that same standard yeah, just because... Cool. I don't know. I just... I've well, I think as far as, like, seeking diagnosis, I mean, what would it do for you, do you think? I think it would just give me a, a point to be able to connect with people and chat to them about it. Cool. Saying, yep. this is something I do have... Not only do we have Warhammer in common, mm -hmm. we've also got this in common. Great. Or I can relate to this. In terms of seeking um, medication or something, mm -hmm. I don't think it's something I need. Mm -hmm. I almost feel it's a superpower, being mm -hmm. able to focus solely like have blinkers on a on a project well they do say it's the next step in evolutionary change <laughs> but anyway i might be a bit biased <laughs> homo, suits me pretty good yeah, homo superior yeah, <laughs> the, the first of the x-men yeah that's it well, so I, I have i've got a friend uh, i probably should have checked if i could chat i won't mention his name but mm -hmm. he had a lot of problems focusing on projects mm -hmm. like a lot of problems and he's a fantastic painter like amazing amazing painter he recently got diagnosed, mid thirties, I think. Mm -hmm. Did get some medication, and now he's like, "My life has changed. Mm. Everything has changed. I don't have to binge eat on things. Mm -hmm. I see things more clearly. Mm -hmm. He can he can focus on an army now mm -hmm. and paint it. Yeah. So for a long time, he he was like, I guess wondering, oh, what's wrong? Why can't I? Yeah. Why can't I focus? On, yep. on this army and it's it's all changed after getting a diagnosis. That's a little similar to my story, although I actually found it was a massive positive thing for me because uh, for a long time I required to function normally to go to gym every day, to paint miniatures, to talk miniatures, to look at miniatures, to watch things. And, like, I used to feel guilty for having all of those things. You know, I'm married, I've got kids, I've got a family... Um, and still hobby does take up a lot of my mind space um, and I'd feel guilty about that. And then when talking through my psychs and, and getting the diagnoses and stuff, he was actually saying, actually, you've gone about ticking all of the mental health boxes without knowing it. You know, you found a meditative practice in miniature painting. You found people like yourself in the gaming hobby um, and gym is a great healthy thing to, for people on the spectrum to go do number therapy, they call it, which I have a theory that number um, therapy is what list building is with the point system, um, which just makes you relaxed and feel awesome. And, like, it, it, I don't know, I get dopamine when I write I love lists. I love building a list. Yeah. 
Lists are great. Anyway, and <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I stopped feeling guilty then because it was like, oh, that's why I do that. And actually, I'm doing the right thing. It's like completely changed my mindset. <laughs> I, I, I and, felt, I've felt the same. I felt the mm. same thing. Felt the exact but you know what thing. too is a lot of people, and this is an important thing with with the autism spectrum is there is a there is still a massive stigma on medication, and for the right reasons in a lot of ways because we get a lot of input from the states, but we're not the states. Yeah, we're not all on high strength painkillers. Yeah, well, some of us are, but <laughs> we're not like the the states. And I think you'll find like even I, I don't know your case, but. Say if you did get a diagnosis and he said, well, why don't you try, because you've got busy brain when you go to sleep, why don't you try melatonin? Because for a starters, if you're autistic, you don't actually produce melatonin, so you can't get to sleep naturally properly. So you might have never slept properly, which is what I encountered. I had melatonin and I was like, oh, that's what it is. Damn, that, <laughs> that explains so much. I do, I do have the occasional like, really good sleep, mm-hmm. but I do go through periods of like maybe a week mm. and I'll... I'll pick Mike up from work. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't sleep till 4 a.m., bro. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> dude. And do you know what you're playing? Like, if, if that's the case, and like I always say to people who are, because I constantly come in, in contact with people who are like, oh, I'm starting meds and I'm like, great. See how it goes. You've got to run a gauntlet, try different things and, and see what works for you. But otherwise, what do you, what do you, you want to play life on hard mode? Like, I don't get it. Like, if you, if something can help you be, um, productive, but also relaxed. Like, you know, busy brain is great, it's fun, but it's also annoying. Like, when you want to get some good sleep and you're like, I know that blood angel is at work, I don't want to get up and check it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it, there's signs when it's good, there's signs when it's bad. Um, medication is uh, it's just something I've come to accept as part of my life. And um, I don't have a stigma towards it because it... It makes my life a lot easier, makes be, being able to be present and uh, helps with, you know, being um, part of my family and, and giving time to them. And also, I think adopting that non-stigma approach to medication, then if they need medication, I'm open to it rather than opening that whole can of worms. You know, having being adamant, I don't want them to be on medication, but then they need it. Because you quickly find out, especially now, how engaged I am in the community that... Um, it's not only um, available, but it's necessary in some, in a lot of cases. Because there's there's some people out there. There's a lot of people out there in unreal amounts of anxiety daily, on a daily basis. And it's just you, you just shouldn't be going through life like that. It's just so hard, so hard. So the more skills we can give them, the more. And and I think the Warhammer hobby, hobby especially is just like bring all your weird and wonderfuls. We don't care. Just as long as you... Uh, I'm not a fan of the actuallys. They're a part of the thing. But anyway, I won't go into that. But <laughs> I mean, we can go into it. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Can go actually, in, yeah. You, you, like the you, might have to, you might have to fill me in on the actuallys because oh. I, I haven't been in the hobby long in, enough to oh, know. Okay, so the way I've always built my armies is like, okay, let's start with what's cool, right? I have to have that dude because I have to paint him. I have to have her because I've got to paint them. And then how does that work in a list? Okay, build a list around it, right? Yeah. Then there's the kind of people, the actuallys, are the guys that sit there and they go, let me look up the latest statistics on win percentages <laughs> and it seems that I will take that army with this amount of miniatures and I will rock up to my local game store and they won't see me coming. <laughs> so this is, this is the Necron player against oh, Alex. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically... Oh, Ale- a- actually, Alex... Actually, Alex. No, so, <laughs> so there's there's a thing that happens at local gaming stores, and it's something we've spoken about a little bit, and it's also something I'm against. It's people that are wanting to bring a net list or a tournament level list to a casual game, Ooh. and I think that prior to playing a game with anybody, discuss what type of list you're taking. I don't encourage tailoring whatsoever. That's just as bad, but. Simply by saying to your opponent, hey, Kale, I've got Ark coming up this weekend mm-hmm. and it's a pretty casual tournament. You get benefits from for it being a casual list. Mm-hmm. Could you bring a similar list? Yeah, I'll or, bring 120 near fights. Yeah, thanks, Perfect. man. Thank you. <laughs> um, or, or I'm thinking of going to the LVO. I'm, mm. I'm going to go to the States. It's competitive. I want to finish highly. 
I'm building a list that is of a tournament level of difficulty. Like it's it's hardcore. It's designed to hit hard. Can you bring one Ooh. equally as hard? I think there just needs to be little discussions in pickup games. Sure, before but you know what? I don't find actually is go to those. Actually, no, realm in the no, they don't. No, no, they don't. They want to go to a casual gaming store and stomp someone. They want to stomp twelve year olds. They want to. <laughs> they love yeah, it. Yeah, they want to. Yeah. They want to do the the noob smash. They want to mm-hmm. get an empty win. And it th- amazes me that that's they'll never they'll never participate in a tournament ever because they don't want to lose a game. Does that like blow your mind that that's someone's psychological state that they're like, yeah, let's go. Beat up on some 14-year-olds today. I'm 31. I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I am and I'm not. I like, I know it's part of humanity, you know, but I'm, I'm just like, I'm surprised by it still that it's a thing. It's just the win at all cost, guys. And, yeah. But they're not, they're not invested enough to actually go to these LBOs no. and do any of that stuff. No. It's weird. I think so weird. it's something we've kind of touched on before is it might be a little bit of that video gamer mentality. Maybe. Where there hasn't been... Because we're talking about a lot of people in the hobby have issues with social interactions. Mm. They may not feel comfortable calling that person out on what they're doing. And Mm. those around them, also in the gaming store, may also not feel comfortable with that type of interaction. Mm. So these people have gone unchecked in the hobby. Yeah. And then you're just getting... It's just instilled with them that this is... They're just getting rewarded every time they do that. But what tends to happen to those guys is they find... They find that... They just don't find pickup games. Mm. Yeah, well, that, that's what happens. Word, word literally goes around, and they don't realise it. No. But, I mean, they should probably be called out. Maybe this is something we should enlighten to people. If, yeah. if you know someone, they have to be a person that plays like that. Let's yeah. let's be clear. It's not someone that's brought a friendly list and has scored extremely high in objectives. <laughs> sometimes yeah, that yeah. just happens. Oh, yeah, Some, yeah, sometimes yeah. you just you just lose like a real And bad sometimes loss. when you're doing the rule of cool, it accidentally is amazing. Yeah. So yep. that happens too, but I'm happy for that. Like I remember m- the guy that I play with, Shane, um, he brought the sisters all flamers list. He's like, I just want flamers. It's like, oh, you can take that flamers. And I was like, yeah, sweet, do, do that. Let's fight it. And it was just, I was GSC and You're I couldn't brutal. get anywhere near him. Yeah, <laughs> he just brutal. Fl- flambe barbecued yeah. <laughs> me. But I'm cool with that because it was an, a narrative that he wanted to go down and neither yeah. of us knew where it was going and, it was, and it's just fun. But yeah. It's, it's the actuallys are, are, are kind of a blemish on the uh, intentions have a lot to do with it I think like yeah. if you're if you're coming to a list and like you said it's an accident like you just get blown out blown out of the park blown off the park whatever mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna be fine with it you're like ah oh, yeah 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 you, you can tell but then the guys you can the, tell the, on the, their the, face the, too, they're yeah. like oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. That'd be, that'd be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the well actually is are definitely you are. They're, they've, plan- they've planned <laughs> they, they've planned it. they've, they've been planned, waiting all year yeah, for this yeah, moment yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. if they don't Ooh. absolutely dominate you they're here's, sour here's an, <laughs> they're sour yeah here's a new kid he's picked up his combat patrol box it's time mm-hmm. for Eldari night spinners nice ad mech there Mike <laughs> interesting <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we'll have our first game and you will pump me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it does it does get rid of one of the greatest moments in hobby though, and that is tricking it actually into believing that you're a noob and then smacking him in a game. <laughs> I've Which is the most glorious thing. I've, I've actually had the friends. The vigilante justice. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> I'm like the Batman of Frankston. <laughs> so uh, he's probably he's probably in chat right now. Tiny is a, is a Batman, so he gets, he's a Batman. So he's a Batman. He'll, he'll get he'll get steered <laughs> towards someone like this, yeah. And they're like, "Hey, you should play this guy." And in in comes big six foot seven Tiny, and I love it. And he puts them in their place. And I've got a friend that does the same thing. There's people that go around and and all they want to do is get these wins. They'll they'll either you not get play, they'll yeah. either not get a game or all of a sudden they'll come up against someone and the a game tournament player. the game will not go the way they <laughs> thought it will wow but that's that's kind of like the you do need that to balance it out like you do. that needs to be that that reaction or that that consequence of playing like that i think mm. otherwise you'll always have the noob smashing as part of the hobby yeah and to be clear i'm fine with the tournament list in the right yeah, yeah, yeah. in the in right a setting yeah in the right setting <laughs> it's got yeah. it in the name yeah, <laughs> it's a tournament list. Yep. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. right. And I mean, it, it, uh, this is not to say too, like if you happen to want to paint what happens to be a tournament list, I'm all for it too. Like if you literally built a tournament list without knowing it, rocked up, 
and smashed me. Uh, you can tell on someone's face if they don't know what it was going to do. Like, my brother played um, Eldar when it just came out recently. Well, not recently, but when it, but when it just came out. And we played a game of it, and he's like in the first half an hour going, what, what's happening? He's like, I can just, I'll, I'll make them all, uh, you're dead. He's like, <laughs> what's the point of this? <laughs> I was Blood Angels, so like I had no hope. Yeah. But it was just like, turn, he's like, oh, yeah, but I run out of these by turn three. Yeah, so he's no like, oh, that's the, that's the equalizing thing. He's like, turn three? There ain't no turn three. There ain't no turn three. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. It was, we're just sort of sitting there going, oh, wow. Um, but yeah, you can tell when someone doesn't know <laughs> yeah. what their list is going to do. And there's some people who've been waiting for it. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think the big thing for me personally is I, I hate to hear it happening to newcomers to the hobby. Mm. Like, you know, you guys, you've been, you've been around a little bit. If you came up against someone like that, you know, it wouldn't deter you from the hobby. It wouldn't, no. it wouldn't stop you playing the hobby well, the, necessarily. The, the, the thing is I've played enough of the game to know what I'm versing mm -hmm. and what it's capable of doing. And quite often I won't even play that person. I was just about to say, the last game I had, a guy set up opposite me and I said, oh, you win, don't worry about it. Yeah, and I'm not there to win, but no. I, know, I know what that list is capable yeah, of that's doing. Yeah, pointless. Yeah. I'll just save myself two hours of listening to you tell me your rules. Yeah. Like, yeah, stuff that. Yeah. That's no, <laughs> especially, no especially against new players because we had an example of Alex playing and we've had, we've had a few comments on Instagram to that post, the one about the noob smashes, majority of them are all positive. It's just like one guy, one guy said, a lot oh, of my, my, list, my list is really, really good. Uh, and I, I played this, this newer player and I, I smashed him. I didn't mm -hmm. mean to, mm -hmm. but it was just the, what happened in the game. What, what can I do for that not to happen? Cause he didn't want it to happen. Mm. And we just simply pointed out it's, it's about reminding your opponent, hey, are there any abilities you can use? Are there strategies you can use? You don't want to tell them what to do exactly mm. because people aren't going to learn that way. But remind them if they've got abilities or, hey, that thing can move, this can jump on this objective. Just give them little pointers. And then we had some people that were just jerks, some guys that thought they were alpha males mm -hmm. saying, oh, what, a, what do you call Alex? I don't know, something derogatory. Just said, harden up. Mm. When they don't actually realise, as a 12-year-old, when you've oh, dude, put yeah. all your time and effort into some models and then you go down to Games Workshop and the first dude you meet is, is an actually mm. and they just pummel you, it's you're just, like, you're just like, well, this hobby's not for me. Yeah. And all of a sudden there are less people in this hobby. Absolutely, because it, it's not just like think about it for longer than five seconds. The the twelve year old that's birthdays and Christmases. This guy's getting these things and painting them up, and it's been waited years. Like myself, like when I first got into the club, I'm waiting years to get the army to then go to Games Workshop and go yes, a game, and then get gutter stomped. It's just terrible. Yeah, and you don't need to. You don't need to be a pushover by all means. No, but, no, no. But yeah. at the same time, realize the situation you're in who you're playing, and you could win the game still. Just back it off a little bit. Help them learn the game. I've Help got a really cool rule that I've instilled at the club. If you bring a tournament list, everything's in deep strike till turn three, and I find that that sorts them out pretty quickly. <laughs> Go as hard as you like, but not till turn three. Right. So the the, the, the the softer list can run on the objectives, yeah, yeah, get, a, get a bunch of victory points first, yeah, yeah, uh, now yeah. you're playing catch-up. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly right. So how long have you been running the club for? Uh, so we started just before COVID. Yeah. Yeah, and then COVID happened and... Um, that would have put a is this, stop is this, is this a, is this a job? Do you do this as a job? Yeah, yeah, so this is my main job, yeah. Yeah. Um, through like, so like through NDIS and that yeah. type of stuff? Yep. So people, we do offer like casual rates as well because there is a, a lot of, especially the older community that aren't NDIS funded because don't have their diagnoses, don't have help, sort of a made a way of working in the world um, without it. Um, and then for NDIS participants as well, we have, um, we, we facilitate them as well. And it's basically just one to three, so... One teacher for every three participants. Um, we try to make sure that all of the teachers as well um, 
either have an autistic diagnosis themselves or have a family member or, or a very experienced um, in that field understand behaviours and how to deal with them and how to help people who are having meltdowns and stuff like that and anxiety. And, um, and we also like to... We've got a couple of students that have gone on to care work because care work is another really great way for people on the spectrum to find work um, because you might want, you might not feel suitable for a trade or you might not blah, blah, blah. And then I sort of say to them, hey, you can get sort of whatever bucks an hour taking someone to the movies. And that sounds pretty good. Like yeah. For three hours, that's your job. And they're like, oh, sweet, where do I sign, you know? And we've had a couple go into care work and then a couple of the... Um, the participants are actually now teachers in the groups yeah, themselves. Nice so one. we like to sort of give them opportunities for work as well, which is cool. Um, and, yeah, that's basically how it works, one to three, and we have different programs on different nights. Have you got, is, you got a business name people could search up if, yeah. they're, if they're wanting to uh, look into this? Yeah, so I work under Tabletop Avengers, um, so you can check that out. On we'll, we'll link that up in the show notes yeah, as well cool. so that... People can, if, if they're listening to this, can just scroll down and yeah, check awesome. you out. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, the the Facebook for Tabletop Avengers is where I sort of um, work most of that. We're working on a site now. It's under the umbrella of Cloud9 Care, which is um, sort of a caring agency that we do for um, other clients that aren't quite ready for the social engagement yet, yeah. uh, sort of building up their skills to get there eventually. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much... We started with one night. I was just like, I just wonder, because both my kids are high functioning um, on the spectrum and we found like a lot of activities for people who are not well functioning, but not so much for the high functioning. And I thought, oh, I just think that board games and Dungeons and Dragons and Warhammer are just such great hobbies for that sort of thing. I think it'll work. So we started with one night and now we're on every night except for Saturday, uh, except for Sunday. Six, six nights a week. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, and on some of the nights, we've got like three classes going at once. Yeah, and that's just local and that's just word of mouth. Um, so now this year, we're probably going to look at getting a space in Frankston um, and opening up to um, this, the local schools and stuff like that and sort of saying maybe some day programs or respite programs for people that are going through alternate school. And, and what sort of age group? Do you, do you find attend? Is it all manner of ages? Or? It's all eight. Yeah, so our youngest participant is five. Yeah. And our oldest participant is in their 40s. Wow. Yeah, so it's all age groups. Awesome. Yeah. That's yep. fantastic. And we've sort of found groups for, um, yeah, for all different age groups. Yeah, we got multiple adult nights, multiple teen nights, multiple younger kid nights as well. So, so how do you run it? Do you run like... A Warhammer night, or is it is it a board game night? Or yep. So we have like say Thursday nights is our adult board game night. Yeah. Tell tabletop. Tabletop so games. They yeah. can do whatever, whether it's board games or they're at the stage now where they sort of know half the games in there and they can just pick up something and play together. Yeah. And it's more just of a safe space for them. But then we run like D and D nights, um, and we got like the local Domino's sponsor us and bring us pizzas, which is how awesome. good is that? Yeah, so good. Um, so yeah, we need a food sponsor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Domino's Frankston. That's a, that's a bit, bit of a hike from here. Man, yeah. I, think, I, think there's a, I think there's a, there's a Domino's mural bark. I think. Yeah, man. Yeah, get on that. But yeah, no. So and, and then we have nights like miniature painting nights. We have multiple of those, um, and that's something I really push strongly. Um, even on our site, we have a separate like tabletop Avengers. Uh, my my wife's company is Social Butterflies, which is the younger kids. Uh, and they do more art and adventure stuff because they're not, you know, they're not into the games and stuff yet because they're sort of five to ten. Um, and then miniature painting is a separate thing oh, because nice. miniature painting is there's all ages all on the same night. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you're from or what you do. That just seems to everyone just sits and, and relaxes and talks rubbish. It's great. Amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. I get paid basically to play games. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, do what you'd be doing anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. beautiful. I yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah. That's so good. And yeah, so obviously you've grown from strength to strength. So, mm -hmm. um, did COVID hinder um, you yeah. much? Or? Yeah, we still did groups and stuff. Um, yeah. We just did it online and we did Tabletop Simulator, which is brutal. 
if you ever have to do that. Have you done tabletop simulator? I haven't simulator? played tabletop simulator. I've seen people playing on it though. Yeah. There's people doing 40k tabletop simulator. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Couldn't imagine moving like 60 models around, pointing and clicking. Ooh, no, thank you. Not for me. You're not familiar with it, Mike. So you can basically build your list and play the game on this, on on a computer. Yeah, okay. And then you just roll your dice in this like AI dice train it stuff. It 3D renders your beautifully painted mm-hmm. Blood Angels, doesn't mm-hmm. it? I think you can scan your own models to oh, have seriously? them replicate. Yeah, I was having mm. a dig. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm. But mm, uh, yeah, I'm. It's definitely not for me. No, it's definitely not for <laughs> me. I can understand it though. It could it could help guys that are in that hardcore tournament scene for sure. Being able to practice multiple oh, times yeah. a night, not yeah, having yeah, to, yeah. to go somewhere to practice. Could, yeah, you could have sure. multiple games on the go, I guess. It, yeah. Potentially. Yep. Oh, I don't know if you could do it. Oh, there's Batman out there. <laughs> My there's, brain melts when I play one game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There, there's, there's Batman out there somewhere with like 10 screens going at yeah. the same time. Oh. Lockie would do it. Lo- yeah, Lockie <laughs> would do it, actually. Lockie would do it, for real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's Yeah, how... How awesome is that? Yeah, it's great. And I think um, the other thing too is like another a part of my mental health sort of journey is that it's actually really helpful for yourself to help other people. Yeah, um, and well, that's sort oh, of... Oh, how how familiar does this sound? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a sort of throwaway comment, but it is. No. Nah, it's so, it's so good. Completely relate. Mm. Completely relate, for yeah. sure. No, we've definitely touched on it in earlier episodes. Like Justin, once he had the purpose of helping people paint armies mm-hmm. almost like a completely different person. yeah for the for mm. the longest time i was i was treading water through life mm-hmm. had it through covid uh without getting into too much detail i had a rough 18 months there was uh, a lot going on during that period and i was not myself didn't feel myself mm-hmm. for a long time probably about two three years yeah i was right. sort of just doing what i needed to do mm-hmm. in life to to, e- to exist yeah just to exist and then it was thanks to mike who saw my my warhammer stuff and he's mm-hmm. like hey man you should put that on tiktok and i'm like yeah i'm already doing a little bit of instagram stuff i need to go to tiktok and we did it got to the thousand followers he's like go live and i'm like no one's gonna want to listen to me and then yeah we just built this community and like i said the community's like wavered it's going up and down just who's in chat but the amount of the, the sense of achievement I've got from helping people is, mm. in, is crazy. And it's changed how I feel as a person. It's given me a goal. Good. It's given me awesome. something to, to strive towards. And it's given me ambition. And for the longest time, I wasn't, I wasn't an ambitious person. I was mm-hmm. happy doing what I was doing, painting models, going to work, going to gym, rinse, repeat. And now there's a goal. So... It's interesting, you know, what you were talking about just then is that it is something that I try to teach a lot of um, people who come in, and that is um, we incorrectly decide that we're going to decide how everyone sees us. So Justin's going to decide how Justin is to everybody. Yeah. And no one really needs him, or I don't feel like I need to do anything. You know, and then someone else goes, actually, Justin, that's rubbish. I think you should do this. And it's when you shut the door to how you feel about you or how you think people perceive you and open the door to maybe people do, maybe I have something to offer, um, that you see actually there's heaps of people that want to see what you're doing. And I think everybody has that. And I would say that to anyone who walks into the club. I'm like, hey, you've got something to give to everybody. You know? And it's usually, it's funny, it's usually the ones that people like the most and the people that enter the room, they're like, you know, him and her, I'm not sure, but I like him. It's always that guy that has the really bad self-worth issues, you know? 100%. Mm. I, could, I couldn't agree with you more in that sense that it's so often, than, more often than not, it's the person that thinks the least of themselves mm. that actually has the most to offer. But it, like you said, every single person without fail has something to offer. Sure. Absolutely. Totally. Except for the actuallys. <laughs> <laughs> they'll become aware one day they'll become aware <laughs> they'll self-destruct at nah, that point no yeah, okay. uh, no nah, they'll become aware and and it happens i'd they'll, like to think one, of an island where only the actuallys exist and they, and they have, have to, to play each other to play each other yeah. to the end of time that'd be a great tv and show. then it would just be a <laughs> tv show it would just be a bunch <laughs> of like 30 guys on the island mm. all with warhammer armies 
mm. not wanting to play each other. Mm, they're all badly painted. Because there's a chance mm. I might lose. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Warhammer Island. Island. I'd watch Warhammer that. Island. I'd watch that. Yeah. <laughs> How's the voting system yeah. work? <laughs> oh. uh, and maybe it's like that you vote for the most popular guy gets to leave the island. So it's like a spit on the actual thing. So it's like, no, everyone still hates you. You got to stay. Damn. Hey, patent it. We can, we can do it. We'll, we'll speak to Channel 9. Is that going to be one of your shows on Twitch? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Warhammer Island. Oh. We were going we to do battle reports. We could just do yeah, that. Man. To actually... <laughs> scrap the battle reports. <laughs> yeah. Actually battles. Oh, but where would we find such people? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you don't have I to look too it, far. <laughs> I think it would be as simple as putting a post up saying, tag and actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Or just go to the local general games or, the, or games <laughs> workshop and say, can you give me a list of your 10 actually? Yeah. <laughs> I'll go, no worries, just rock up on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see them lurking around the oh. kids' table. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Goodness me. That's crazy. When, when you found out, like, the, your, your diagnosis mm-hmm. and everything like that, because I was, I was interested, you asked Justin, did it change anything... Would it change anything for mm-hmm. him? Did it change any the way that you viewed yourself at all? Yeah, for sure. It, um, again, I touched a little bit on um, acceptance, but turning from why, why is and and also is it? Am I different, or is every? Are you do you feel these things that I feel? Because I have no way of knowing whether you do, and I just spent that first thirty or something years assuming everyone was going through those levels of anxiety assuming everyone had these social difficulties and, and difficulty understanding each other and stuff like that, and then being told, actually, no, y- you know, it's not like that for you. It's been a harder. Yeah. Um, and so there's uh, almost new self-discovery, which is really helpful. Um, almost a validation. Yeah, a validation for sure. And, again, not feeling guilty. I used to feel I – feel, I still feel guilty – for having hobbies and taking up time and stuff like that, but a lot less because I have an understanding of why I'm doing it. Um, and I was it, I'm very similar to you. I'm, mind you, the position I'm in now, for a while I thought I was in a really bad position in my life and now I've realised that I'm actually in an extremely fortunate position because mm-hmm. when, those, when that guilt creeps up, mm. I'm, I'm living by myself mm-hmm. and... There's no reason for me to feel guilty about Mm -hmm. the time that I'm putting towards Battleforge Gaming. And if anything, it's helping grow what is potentially going to be a business. So that in itself has helped me sort of... And you know what? Even if if you weren't, there's still a reason to do it. And it's okay. You shouldn't feel guilty. Yeah. Um, It's more... People have to have an understanding of what it is. And I, I found it really helpful... Um, when my psych was sort of talking to me and going, well, actually, that miniature painting is not miniature painting for you. It's meditative. And I wager it's meditative for everyone that does it. Um, Unknowingly, you're going off into a space where everything disappears. Even when you're doing, like, um, when you're doing the assembly and stuff like that, it can go... uh, I hate assembly, but for me, it's a nightmare. Assembly can just... Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. But for some people, they love it. You know, the converting and changing and doing all this stuff, you know, and um, that creation uh, is meditating. And meditating is so important for your psychological self, you know. Um, And then a lot of people that are in this hobby, I wager, don't get it out as much as other people do. Um, They're very insular people for the most part. Um, and going to these game sh- nights and going to their game shops is like their thing that they do. And that's your interaction with other people. Um, and without that, where would you be? Like for me personally in my story, I would have gone down a very bad road if it wasn't for the hobby. Yeah. You know, so I can speak to the fact that I wouldn't probably be here if it weren't for the hobby, potentially. Yeah. You know, who knows? But... Um, I think there's a place for the hobby. For, like everyone that goes there, it's so important for them and it's their thing. And um, there's so many people that 
they love fantasy and they love rolling dice and they like they don't know that they want to make a list until they've made it, you know. And there's so many people sitting at home right now on the spectrum that are going, I'm just going to play video games and sit in my room and that's going to be my existence, you know. Um, so I urge them, if they're watching or they, they happen across this, just find your local game store and have a look around. I'm hoping that this episode here resonates with a lot of people out there. I hope so and, too. And gets gets them motivated to potentially do something about sort of their position they're in. And you know what's funny? I love those in those... Um, I don't know whether DreamHack's going to... I assume DreamHack's going to do it, but it's funny how you have these areas in these things where there's painting and everyone's sort of going and sitting with other people and they're all, like, looking at this one thing and then sort of looking up as they're changing paints and going, oh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, blah, blah, blah. It's so funny how it's, like, such a by yourself sort of thing but even within that in these big you know um events that you can go into this area and be painting next to somebody and sharing that experience and just and i think that's so important and then the outside world would just it goes just, just, and then you can open it up when you like it to you yeah. know it's um it's really cool and i think like especially warhammer um i i guess to an extent Magic the Gathering sort of got that vibe about it too with the deck building and stuff like that. But Warhammer especially with the list building and the lore and there's just so much. Um, and it's, I, that ho- it's that hobby pie that, that Glenn from General Games was talking about. So many slices of the hobby pie. Like mm. you're talking about lore, um, converting, painting. Terrain. Terrain, list building. Like there's there's just heaps and heaps and heaps of lists. Like... Um, Slices Options, that yeah. pie, yeah. yeah. Mm. Yep. And I'd wager that there's something in the hobby for everyone. For sure. Yeah. There's people that read books. They don't paint yeah. any of the models. They don't, yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. game at all. There's people that just paint and don't game. There's the people that just game. Mm-hmm. Paint, paint your models as well. Paint your models as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because boo to plastic. Yeah. yeah. That's not okay. Any paint's better. Just paint. put red on them. Yep. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Yep. There's something, yeah. But do you know what's funny is in, in the classes, everyone sort of goes, oh, oh no, miniature painting, oh, too hard. I go, hey, I could do one class and I guarantee you I'll teach you dry brushing and glazing and that's it and you will have a mini that's far better than you thought it was going to be. I can guarantee you. And you teach them the tricks, you know, of just dry brushing and glazing and they go, actually, that's not bad. Yeah. And that's the starting point. And I always tell people in my, in my painting classes, I goes, just allow yourself to be crap. Because a lot of adults, when we go into something, we've got this There's expectation the of... The fear of failure as well. Yeah. And but the, also, the, the I have to start so... off at least medium good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is insane when you yeah, say it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. The, the fear is so high that people just don't even want to start painting. Mm. And like you said, the, it's almost an unrealistic expectation by yourself to to think that you're going to be above average when you first start. There'll be people that do it, for sure. Oh, there are, especially but, in my classes, but, my God. But it's a, it's a minority of people. Like it a, is. A real minority yeah, of people. For sure. My first model was, was <laughs> not great. I, yeah. I wish I kept my Fire Warrior. Like, it was, it was uh, below, I have well only, below average. <laughs> I have only evidence of about six years into the hobby. It's the well, only we evidence. do actually have some evidence of... Of your work, we haven't actually brought oh, any of this yeah. stuff up. We've got, we've got some, we got some photos of Kale's work. Oh yeah, it's probably probably good time give, to bring give, it in. Give people, yeah, some. go for it. So, yeah, I think first up we've got uh, your Dante, which is kind of exciting for us to talk about with you because mm-hmm. this is back to your personal hobby journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is the first model you've used. Non metallic metal. Yeah. Oh, I I dabbled in the silver, but never the gold because I was scared of gold. I, was the gold easier than silver? I would not nope. that I, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> not, not even slightly. I was like, oh, yellow, <laughs> yellows and browns and stuff. So non-metallic metal is not something I will attempt. I, I'm almost confident saying ever because of the way I paint. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not planning on painting. I mean, you do heavy metal solid. style, so yeah. I mean, why would you? Yeah, yeah, and and you've sort of mastered that and. I guess you find joy in that. I find joy in tormenting myself, so <laughs> I never like staying in the in the lane. 
at well, all. Not my, to say you are. My tor- my torment is the the <laughs> essentially the grind of painting uh-huh. a seventeen hour regular intercessor. <laughs> That's the, that is my torment. But I very again I very much enjoy that. So mm. well, I love challenging myself. So I think also running the classes, being a um, a teacher of painting, I think. Oh well, if I'm going to teach it, I have to know it. So I can't just say I don't do that anymore, you know. So I'm, I'm like I just went to the art shop the other day to get oil because I'm going to try some oil washes. I haven't done that before. Um, so some models, I have to apologise in advance, are going to get some terrible oil wash treatment. <laughs> but there's but only one way to learn. There's only one way. You've got to be crap before you're good. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of people that are just like, I'll try this and it's amazing, but like that's not me. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's Kieran from last. <laughs> that is Kieran from yeah, last right. week's podcast. I have no patience for these yeah, he people. Picks, he picks something up and he's like, "Well, yep, that looks like I've done that for ten years." <laughs> oh, great! Oh, good for them. <laughs> so, so <laughs> that's I, not me. How, how long did your Dante take? Do you think you got an idea of how long? Uh, I would say twenty hours, which what? is a lot for me because I usually pretty fast but i halfway through dante there's some other pictures on my ig of me starting him and i got those you know the headset with the magnifying things yeah yeah. i was like i draw the line at that i'm not putting on them because i don't want my wife to see me wearing them because i feel like it's a relationship ender it's an image you won't forget because i look like the guy (laughs) from you know honey i shrunk the kids yeah 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 that's what i felt like but then i was like oh i said to my wife i'm like look I want to kind of get next level with what I'm doing. Turns out it, it reignited your, your marriage as well. So there you not go. only did it advance your, your That's hobby, great, it's yeah, also definitely just... did that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it turns out my wife loves magnified eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I love how large your pupils are right yeah, now. Yeah. Oh, they're so dreamy. <laughs> um, no, but I, I sort of looked at it with the magnifier and I was like, well, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. And so I started back on him. So, But um, it, it does help me level up straight away with those magnifying things. So that was awesome. And um, I'd been sort of... I'd sort of been going with, like, cheap airbrushes as well. Yeah. And they're a menace to clean and it's just a nightmare anyway. They're so inconsistent and all that. And I thought, no. Um, I was talking to my wife about it. She's like, well, just... Get the stuff you need to get that next level. So I was like, and, right. And don't tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and don't show me the bill. Yeah. And I said, I'll, I'll just get a really nice airbrush, which has been oh, amazing. It's so like. Which one did you pick up? Uh, the CR Infinity. Yeah. So I think Infinity is the one that Cult of Paint maybe did a, a collab with, I believe. They An- must, I think Angel they Geraldes has his, oh, his, his own. His yep, brush one. is insane. Mm. Like so I mine's the step po- down from it's not his man. one, but yeah, the same sort of thing. Yeah, man, oh. I see his thing, and it's just oh, like, yeah. what the? That's how? if I've got an infinite budget, I'm yeah. picking one of them up for sure. Yeah, very, very cool. But yeah, that that helps you level up straight away. You yeah. know, quite often some of the things um, are the tools that you're using. You're sort of hamstringing yourself. You know, um, like you use the step up from the standard Citadel brushes. Yeah, yeah, I use the the Artificer. It's probably one of the most frequently asked questions, yeah, what yeah. brush? And it is a sable hairbrush, the, mm-hmm. the the artificers. So it, it, you know, I haven't used the Kalinskis or the Winds and Newtons or any of that type of stuff, mm-hmm. but it would be comparable to those. Mm-hmm. And I do recommend that people, when they're getting into the hobby, get yourself a good brush because mm. it makes a world, oh, nine day. a world of difference. The only caveat with that, and it's similar to an airbrush, is make sure you do the maintenance work, oh, clean sure. your brush often, clean your airbrush often because it will last a long time if, if you do that. So don't be worried about committing that sort of finance towards a, a more expensive product as mm. long as you look after it. Yes. And then it will look after you. Yeah, you know what? That's a great thing to say yeah. because if you're going to not wash your brush, don't get an artist opus or an artificer or something like that because it, you'll trash it. If, if within three uses, the same as your trash, a ten dollar brush. Yeah. But um, once you learn how br- how good brushes can be, you learn that you are hamstringing yourself not using it. Yeah, it definitely won't. A good brush helps you paint better. It won't make you a better painter instantly. But like you said, it's not it's not going to 
hamstring your mm. your hobby. Like and wet I, palette again. Wet that's another palette, one. One hundred percent inclusion. Mm-hmm. Good lighting. Really, really good lighting mm-hmm. makes a huge, huge difference. People don't think it does, oh, but dude. being able to see absolutely every single area of your model and the colors that you're actually painting, so daylight globes, mm-hmm. like don't go under a blue office light, mm. don't go under the warm, romantic, like mm. yellow light, leave that for dinner. Oh, nice. Yep. Daylight, <laughs> daylight globe, so you know the colors you're painting and that's how it's going to appear. When you've you've finished it and played, so it again, on your top. wife's not going to appreciate the daylight globe, but no. it's better for your painting. It's better for your painting. Yeah, yep. get the get the candles in the warm yellow lights in, in, for dinner. Yeah, yep. that's yep. it. I like it. Good tips there for dinner. <laughs> that's good. So, <laughs> what would I know? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the Dante, the NMM mm-hmm. Dante, that how did that come about? Was that something a, a student art, like a Heavily inspired by my Dante, obviously. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> no, I always wanted to do that model. Yeah. Um, well, and you're a Blood Angels. I'm a Blood, Blood Angels Blood, guy, but yeah. I was a Blo- I started Blood Angels um, a little bit later because I was doing – I did Crimson Fist Army and then I did Necrons Army and then I did GSC. Yeah. And then I was sitting around because I've always had a thing for vampires. Um, not a I mean, thing, who hasn't? But, uh <laughs> And then I was like, wait, Blood Angels? They're kind of vampire-y. Well, they 100% are, yeah. And my friend keeps telling me they're not. And then I say, well, the Mephiston model looks awfully like a vampire. No, <laughs> but not no. being a vampire. He got vials of Look, blood. I, they, 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 they don't need, I don't think they need blood as sustenance, but they, they, um, they consume blood. They're as about as vampire-y as a non-vampire gets. So I then went, well, I'm doing that then. Um, but unfortunately for me, that was after the Dante model had already come out and was already sold out. Oh, yeah. he was so popular. It was so I was crazy. Like, oh, just waiting. And then I've got the first one that I could get. And that's when I started the, I was like, I had done a couple of competition pieces with, um, non-metallic silver. So I was starting to get into it. I thought, I, f- I felt like that was natural. I thought, great. And I remember I tried once at like sword hilt in, in gold. And I was like, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm like, how can I be with half decent and then poop? And so I was just like, well, my, my sort of way of thinking is if you crap at something, just pick something that's only that. Yeah, jump in. And you just got to <laughs> just got to go for yeah. it. So that was my mindset with the Dante. I'm like, oh, and I did. I learned so much so much within that one model and now i sort of look at it it's funny because it's it's got my sort of non-metallic gold journey on him yeah so like people probably can't see that but i can sort of see where i was developing the skills and how far down or how far up he went the more comfortable i got and yeah and it's something i said on one of your streams justin that i was like i think i'll revisit this model in like two years you know how the painters do those two For years sure. later I, like he was such a fun model to paint. I think he's yeah, he's probably one I'll revisit. Yeah, mm. it is a it's an amazing model. It's a, oh, it's so a, good. Such a good. The model. pose is cool. Just yeah. everything's cool. Very cool. I've got plans for that. A Dante. I might might paint a second one at some point, mm. but that's that's a secret. That's a secret project. That one. Okay. Yep. I like it. So yeah. So with the the competition side of things with mm-hmm. painting, is that something you're looking to? Sp- dive further into yeah so this year i'll probably be more active in that because i think also too when you're like developing your skills as a painter the best thing to develop skills is to go into competition see other people that are painting like super high grade part of me stuff and um and also testing yourself constantly to try new things and i i'm not as good at justin with like motivation to do like high detail like I really like tabletop plus that's sort of where I sit like it looks good but I can get through 10 models in two hours I really like that Um, but it's also good to sit down and just do pants for a day that sounds awful (laughs) yeah you know like hone into one tiny part of the model and then do that for a whole session I was gonna gonna use a different example and be like paint a helmet for the day and then I was like actually that's (laughs) yeah that's worse (laughs) (laughs) 
that's great. Excellent. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think again, like try try things that I'm not good at. So I'm not good at um, like competition grade necessarily because when you go to competitions, you see a whole new level of things. But also just trying things that you don't know much about. Uh, when you're doing competition stuff, like, and I watch a lot of uh, YouTube clips or tutorials like Justin's and stuff like that, when you're looking into it, they use a lot of reference piecing and stuff like that. So that's another thing I never used to do. So non-metallic metal's great for that because I was like looking up curved way metal reflects. Yeah, and I mean, you can find multiple different art because different artists paint mm. non-metallic differently. And so. Dante is a great example of that. Like Angel, like um, there's a bunch Flame of them. Flame on. Yeah, <laughs> Flame on's just Let's, Oh my God. Dude is not human. Dude is not human. And he wears the same glasses as you. There so, you go. So, yeah. So, he's obviously successful with the ladies yeah, as I well. Yeah, I think he saw you <laughs> wear them and then he was like, I need to ah, get some. Ah, that, that explains everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's catching on. <laughs> yeah, it's catching on. I need to get some of those glasses. Oh, dude. Don't look at anything you've done, though. Nah. I actually... <laughs> so, bef- I, I used to have an LED ring light which had a magnifying glass oh, on yeah, it. Oh, yeah, cool. And I painted some dark Eldar with it and it was, it's obviously uh, a learning curve to be able to use that and know when you're actually mm. making contact with the model because mm. it's a little bit different when it's like just natural hand eye. But it even back then I painted some extremely thin edge highlights when I think about it when I was maybe three or four years into the hobby. So... It was probably almost comparable to what I do now when I'm trying to do my, like, crispest lines, which which is weird now when I think about it. I didn't really think about it at the time. I don't think I'll I don't think I'll use them because I don't I don't need them. But mm-hmm. I'll maybe one day. Think of how finer you could get though. I don't. Do I need to go finer though? <laughs> <laughs> For, if I ever did a competition piece, I would. Mm-hmm. But the competition I would enter would more likely be a golden. Demon type of competition because Mm -hmm. that is geared towards heavy metal, yeah. Like, except the the absolute echelon of heavy metal painting. And I think myself too. Like, what brought me actually to your stream was the fact that I wanted to get better in that heavy metal style because I don't paint in that style at all. Um, And so it's good to see people that are really comfortable with that style. And I've I've since watching your stream like subscribe to a bunch of ex heavy metal artists and like Darren Latham I, I I follow him as well, just to see that different style of painting. Um, it's I think it, there's never a skill that you shouldn't learn. No, you know, and some but sometimes that the certain paint styles aren't suited for you. Mm. Like there are guys like Flame as mm. an ex- example. He's non metallic metal. He doesn't paint. He doesn't paint heavy metal. He doesn't need to. He's found his niche that he's really, really good at and he has leaned hard into it. So I think he could. He, oh, man, he could for sure. <laughs> not, <laughs> saying, not saying he wouldn't, but like yeah, yeah, he's, no, no, he's no, found success in what he's doing now. Yeah. And that's why, I, that's why I like to make my tutorials for people and put them up on our YouTube so people can look at the way I paint and I try and make it seem achievable. I know that getting a fine edge highlight is a lot of work mm. to get to that point. But I also want to make it so people can see it and be like, geez, that's not as intimidating as I thought it was. Mm-hmm. I, I can give that a go. And we received a comment of a guy that literally worded it that way. So awesome. It, it, yeah. Looking at other people's stuff, using it as a reference is a fantastic way to improve as a painter, find the stuff that mm. you like. Don't you Don't compare yourself to them. Please never, ever do that. Comparison is the thief of joy. You will destroy your motivation. Oh, for sure. But find someone, be like, I like that. I want to aim to get there. Having that as a goal is fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Excellent. Is uh, is that something you sort of teach at the club where, like, to... Anyone, does anyone come in with expectations and things like that, do you think? Uh, I think so. I think there's a lot of... Because a lot of the people that come into the class, usually they'll, they'll see the miniature painting class and they'll go, I'm really good at art. Because um, we have a lot of people that are really good at... Um, like Jean, who watches your stream a lot, she's really talented at um, her art on her iPad and stuff. She does... Um, I'm going to get it wrong. Anime stuff. Yeah. Um, but 
they do that and they're amazing and I think they came into the class expecting to sort of be that same level of amazing and um, straight away straight away yeah um, but then and she's they're now a great painter um, but not at the beginning and that's all right um, but then it's about enjoying the process too um, quite often I mean not for them because you know they're still young but for someone like myself who was going to start the hobby tomorrow we're not we don't have to start things from scratch very much anymore you know we're sort of established in yeah. our life it's kind of nice to start something new yeah don't you think and like learn something and and be crap and then not be crap anymore it's kind of cool it's about pushing through that stage as well. Don't give up when you paint your first model. Don't don't paint that first model and be like, oh, this is so bad because almost everyone was in the same spot and then it's about pushing through and improving little bit by little bit. You don't want to uh, – I, I, I think it's a really bad habit of looking at the box art and saying, I want to achieve that, painting your first model, having it suck and then being like, I still want to achieve that. Having that as the goal is fantastic. Look at the areas you can improve on though. Are your colours all bleeding out onto other areas? Is your like gold aquila on the ultramarine chest like spilling out over the blue? Mm -hmm. If it is, that's a simple area you can just work on. Mm -hmm. Work on tidying that up. You can work on doing a recess shade to add depth to your model and then work on cleaning up the edge highlight. Just marginally work on a model. Don't work on it as a whole. Mm. I mean, I think the Dante is probably a good example of yours. Like you said, there was progress through the model each step. And I'm sure when you progressed each area, it was because you're like, oh, ah, yeah, exactly. this worked here. Yep. I should be doing that more. Yep. Instead of being like, oh, this Dante model sucks, painting it all at once. Oh, for sure. And do you know what? I think the internet is, is a great thing and a terrible thing sometimes. And I think if you're starting out, don't put your models up there. Because if I put my first model I painted up, and went, what do you reckon, guys? I, I reckon there would have been at least three or four comments to say, you know what, it's not for you. And I might not have done it. Another really good example, again, Darren Latham, which mm -hmm. he's going to come on the podcast because I just keep dropping his oh. name. <laughs> but he was talking about painting models for display. And one of the things was seeking advice from, I guess, more experts in the industry. Don't put it out to the I, wider public. I, I saw Ooh. that post. Don't put it out to the yeah. wider public because you're going to get a whole varied range of answers. There's actually just waiting for you to put it up. Yeah, and again, it's that bell curve, right? There's a bell curve. When you first get into the hobby, a lot of the time people feel they know everything, mm -hmm. right? And then the bell curve goes down as more experience happens and you end up being, there's a, there's a bunch of hobbyists that sort of just do their own thing. They don't really socialise with people. They don't really tell other people mm. what to do. And then you come back up and there's people that are really experienced which are now starting to sort of try and help people and voice their opinion. I guess that's sort of where I'm at. I don't want to say that I'm an expert by any means, but I've had experience and success with my painting. So now I'm trying to help people. So mm. you'll get opinions from the people right at the start of their hobby that feel they know everything mm -hmm. when they actually don't. Mm. And then you'll get the – you might get some answers from experienced people. So – if you're going to the broader public with your models early on, realise that this could be the case and you, you quite often it'll be the, the ones that are new that are the ones that are saying you're doing all of this wrong mm. and they don't know what they're doing. Mm. So. It, is, it is interesting though because like it's, it can be a bit of an unknown I think with we had um, Naz on a few episodes ago and she said like that she kind of put her stuff out there and it was her first few models and albeit she was pretty amazing for first few models they the, all of all of the messages she got were sort of supportive and Great. people that actually were in a similar position learning the hobby like she was mm -hmm. so they kind of bonded and related over that type That's of great. that part of the journey so like you never know with your stuff but i think like justin said you do need to be aware that you could get comments that aren't mm. supportive and I was just oh thinking, man we get them like yeah, we, I imagine, yeah, I we get them for sure <laughs> uh, but I'm just thinking like when I said that with the putting my first I mean, if someone had said to me that's no good pack it up I might have yeah and I just don't think painting is something that you should go my first one what do you think to the internet yeah I think just 
maybe you do get positive feedback. Maybe. But if it's risk, if you're risking not doing the hobby anymore, don't worry about it. Go yeah, away till yeah. you feel comfy. Take a photo of it. Keep yeah, a, yeah. keep an or keep the model. I, I love people keeping their older models. I wish I did. Like it's a stepping stone of your journey. It's so good. I've got the model that I won. I won um, the Young Bloods competition in Ringwood, in a painting comp, and I was 14, and I still have that mini. And I was like, that's yeah. that's cool. That's sick. <laughs> so that was cool. Yeah, I think I think what people need to realize is every hobby is the same like as far as your entry there's no you can't you don't go into the warhammer hobby and start painting and paint a bad model and then look at surfing and be like oh maybe that's for me this hobby's not working out maybe that's for me every single hobby is the same when you first start mm. it's you don't know you don't nail a kickflip the first it, time you jump on a skateboard it's brutal it's brutal like yeah i've done a lot of hobbies that the, the entry level is just pain and physical injury and things like that. So when you get to that point, whether it be a couple of weeks and a couple of months and a couple of years and, mm -hmm. and you can actually just enjoy it because you're at a level where you can, you know, you can paint the models to a standard you're happy with and then play with them. It's an amazing feeling. Mm. So don't let that initial struggle mm. deter you. And there's no reason to, think this hobby isn't for me i'm going to try something else because that hobby will likely be very similar to the entry point of that's Warhammer. true that's true that's good like I, I i can see people looking at the hobby and being like oh it seems like a lot of work and s anything worth doing is mm. so that's so true yeah yeah i've i've done a lot of hobbies in my time and every single one of them started exactly the same way <laughs> there you go so yeah that don't let don't let that deter you Definitely stick it out, get to that point like you guys are at where you're just enjoying it. You're just mm. having a good time doing what you love. Which and I think painting too, once you get to like a decent level at painting, I think when you're adopting the new stuff, you have got that sort of... Uh, do you know what I think is one of the best skills is learning how to fix mistakes in your painting? Don't be afraid to fix them either. So mm. I think so many people paint their model and they just leave it. It's, yeah. It's paint. Go back over it. And I'm so less scared to try something new because I'm like, oh, I'll just fix it, you know? Yeah. And I'm not worried about it. And I think um, – and the only way to know how to fix them is to make them. So I've made a hell of a lot of mistakes <laughs> yeah. in my painting. And I, still, I, still I don't know them. why, but – I was. I was oh in that, no! I was here in we go. Is this a roast? No, no, oh. I was, no not I at like all. it. Go, no, no. go. That looked like, this world, looked like it was going to be one. A, not at all. I was, I was pointing at you. That reminds like, me of the model you did, Justin. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I was the same. I was like exactly the same. For some reason, yeah. I thought you couldn't paint back over it. I was like, mm -hmm. you do the base coat and then you do the next part, and oh no, I've spilled some on it. I'm like, damn it. That's it. Done. <laughs> Throw it in the bin. I don't, I don't know why though. Like it doesn't <laughs> make any sense. You could totally. Why? Why couldn't you? Why couldn't you paint back over it? <laughs> I mean, if your paints were really thick. Yeah. I, I I love the. You can see someone's like touched up, gone over, and it's like. It's like a nice yeah. line. Yeah. 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 So there's yeah. You can't always do it. <laughs> yeah. You learn how to thin your paints and. Yeah. Yeah. Fix yeah. your mistakes. It so. is paint after all. You can. You can strip it back. You can it, strip it back. If it happened, you can strip it back. Yeah, you can it's cry, not, strip it back. It's yeah, fine. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. It's just, Have a bath, forget for some, about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, for some reason, I don't know if, if a lot of people feel the same way. I just did not think that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean for sure. When you don't have the skills, you're like, well, now I've made this mistake. How, I can't fix it. Mm. What am I going to do? Yeah. I guess how do I fix it? Yeah, yeah. That would yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah, and it's and you find ways around it, and then you're like, oh, next time you do it, it's just like, oh, don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, and like you said, now it's like, um, I don't care if I make a mistake, fix it. Yeah, and I, I used to do things like dry brush, like as my last thing that I'm doing, <laughs> which now is the worst thing. You dry brush first. Like if I'm like if I'm painting dwarves now, I do all the metallics, just dry brush them real quick. Awesome, all the metallics are done, and now I can zone in on those little bits, and I don't have to worry about any spill. Yeah. Again, this is all that stuff that comes with experience mm. and making mistakes mm. and, and learning. So the amount of times I've put metallic flakes over stuff I've painted and been like, "Oh yeah, dry brush first. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. No, it's a yeah. It's a it's a learning curve, and yeah, you just you just got to put in that effort, mm -hmm. I think, and put in that time. Everyone, the reps. You'll all, yeah, the reps exactly. Mm -hmm. You'll get there. You'll get there. That's I feel it. like especially with your style, reps is key. For sure. Because yep. there, there ain't no way to get better at 
edge highlighting. Blade without, edge yeah, highlighting. Yeah. Edge highlighting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but that was the thing. The one thing that I got in the hobby, I saw the box art. I was like, yep. this, this is this is my goal. Mm-hmm. And I knew edge highlighting was the, the part that I needed to work on. Mm-hmm. So I just did. And I picked models. I picked models that... Like, have edges that have edges, so a it was a lot of Marines. space marine. Yeah, there's a lot of tau. So cool. Yeah. yeah, there's there's tons of like Eldari is gonna be the next one. When you're painting like wraiths and stuff, they mm-hmm. still have a lot of edges. It's not the square hard edges that you get on tau or space marines. You're gonna do those cool ass faces on the of, on the cool, wraiths. Cool. Uh, I'm doing a more classic with just the transfers and I, stuff. I, every time I see with those the skulls cool on them, skulls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to do one of them. They're so cool models. I'm I'm pretty sure they're rubbish. Oh no, wait, they're pretty good at the moment, aren't they, Wraiths? Mm, Wraith Knight the, was busted, and then they fixed I him. I think with the Spirit Seer, Wraith Guard, and Wraith Blades are okay. All right. I don't think they're the strongest, which is completely cool with me because yes. I don't really care, and oh, I just love. I've always liked the they're Wraith so ones. Cool. Yeah. They're so cool. Wraith Host is going to be cool. It's going to take a long time though. That'll be like end of next year type of thing when I've got. Like a sizable force, but they're they're expensive models points wise in game, Ooh. like hundred and ninety points. So you won't have to paint that many up. Nice. And you can always dump a wraith knight in there. I think he's like 500, 400 points. That's, that's a that's, quarter of your that's, arm. Yeah, that's a big that's a big <coughs> point sink there. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see when when you get to the Aldari. Yeah. Well, I've got lots of Blood Angels to do before then. We need to paint lists for battle reports. So, yeah. Awesome. When do you, uh, is there a ballpark of when that's going to go? Uh, we're thinking mid, mid sort of year, I, I think. So, Dream Hack is obviously goal number one for us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a big, we want to we want to do a, a really good showing there. We and wanna, when and where is, is that? So, again? Dream Hack is on the 26th until the 28th of April. So, three days. Is the Anzac Day weekend. Uh, tickets are yet to be on sale. We got an email saying they are nearly going to announce when tickets are on sale as well as the yeah, venue. Hopefully this coming week. I yeah. think, it's, I think it's, they're aiming for it. It's been held back a lot. Yeah. They, okay. they would have been wanting to sell tickets probably last year, I'm thinking. Ooh. But the Victorian government have been, I don't know, delaying Could the be. announcement or something. Yeah, right. So I think, after, I think they've just been signing on for a new extended yeah, term new or contract. something like yeah, that. Yeah. So they've okay, had to, yeah, they've had to get this done and then every year after this one should go a lot smoother, I think, for them. So, yeah, we'll be doing some battle reports at DreamHack. Oh, cool. That is going to essentially be the precursor to... Battle reports. ...doing our actual battle reports. Awesome. So mid, mid-year, mid hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll start with smaller lists. It won't be 2,000 off the bat because... It's very hard to paint a high standard army, mm-hmm. and that's sort of what I've asked from all of all of my friends mm-hmm. because we want to very much show off the the work, painting, yeah, yeah, of, of people. Sense. We want we want to stand apart with that type of stuff. So yeah, cool. Hopefully, mid year battle reports start happening, and awesome. we've we've got some big ideas for them. Oh, that's which, cool. Which Exciting. we'll announce at some point. Yeah, cool. I was trying point. to get we'll some info for us, but I couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try. Uh, we'll see how the dream hack stream goes hopefully oh, yeah, it'll be amazing cool. that'll be again that's another thing it'd be a learning curve for us we've yeah. never, yeah, never tried cool, to man. stream a game so it's all things involved camera angles yeah well we've streamed games but not to this extent not to the extent yeah, i mean it could go. just be me holding your iphone we can do that no nah, it's not going to be that <laughs> 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 be like, i thought these guys were going to be serious about it it's bfg reports. on a bigger scale you get there it's just a bigger phone yeah yeah that's great. Yeah. But yeah, that's basically that's what your year's gonna look like, isn't it? Years awesome. booked out, yeah. That's great. It's only Feb. Yep. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's good to have the the plans in place to get where we want to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was chatting about it on stream the other night. It sadly looks like I won't be able to do a tremendous amount of passion projects anymore because we are trying to create tutorials and battle reports mm. and that's requiring me to paint specific models for tutorials, which is fun, gives me a palette cleanser and they can have a little bit of a, a passion project. You know, the next ultimate guide is going to be a salamander. 
cool. which is a model I wanted to paint for a long, long time. Yeah, awesome. So that in itself is a passion project. But, you know, if there's a model that comes out that I, I want to paint and it's in a different faction, there needs to be a reason for me to paint it because my time is quite valuable when it comes to... What miniatures you paint. Yeah. yeah makes sense. So, yeah. That's yeah. that's me for the year. I'm awesome. done. I'm <laughs> all that's my great. stuff's booked out. Yeah. So what's uh what's uh, next for the club and and Kale? Yeah. So I think the rest of my year is going to be uh, chasing up a space for us. I think will be really great. It's um, table, tabletop Avengers. Tabletop Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so ch- chasing up a space for us um, and working on some day programs as well. Yeah. Um, uh, just growing and um i mean the whole idea is to um help as many people as we can um and what started off as a sort of idea wondering how many were local now understanding that there's a massive need for it um just even in the frankston area um and then eventually probably expanding into other other parts of victoria because you know that if there's so much need in just our area, I'm sure it's everywhere. I was going to ask, what areas do you service? But is it, do you find that most people arriving at the moment are local or...? No, no, we have people all over the Mornington Peninsula yeah. and then also sort of up towards the Dandenong area as well. Yeah, and do, um, you think, do you think that's only that way because you haven't done a great deal of advertising? Like it's more of word No, of it's just time. It's just yeah. time because a lot of people, if it's if it's teenagers after school wanting to get to the class, class starts at 4.30, their school finishes at 3.30. Yeah. There's just no way they can get there sort of thing. Do you, do you think your space is going to be you're, – you're obviously going to keep situated in the Frankston sort of area. Yeah. 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 And then we can probably – you know, I'm just thinking pie in the sky here. In a yeah, couple yeah. of years probably branching out to, to yeah. neighbouring locations and stuff okay. like that. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, because I just it's it's to service a need that's out there and to service yeah. so, so many people and to think of I've got you know seventy five people or so that come to the club and literally ninety percent of them didn't leave the house for years and to think now that they've got friends we've got people who started relationships from the club we've got lots of different things going on and it's just amazing to be able to provide such awesome people. There's no one I dislike. There's like just the most amazing people that walk through the door. My wife and I always tell each other, don't fall in love with this one. And then they come in and we do like straight away, you know, and it's so lovely to be able to, to know that those people are now not by themselves and, and yeah. can experience life. And if, the more that I think that there might be some more people like that out there, the more incentive it gets me to, to drive yeah. to do more. Well, it must, be, it must be so rewarding to sort of pass your message on that, you know, life doesn't have to be that hard because you yeah. know that it doesn't yeah, have to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you've, exactly you've been right. through it yourself. So. Yeah. And I think that's important too, like having teachers and, and people with a lot of experience in those sort of things that have gone through mental health crises and understands that that doesn't mean that you're not a person. Or it doesn't mean that you're lower than other people. It's just, it's a part of life um, yeah. for people on the spectrum. And especially for our generation. Uh-oh. There's oh, a little it's the dog. puppy. There's a little dog. Hello. Um, it's like an spe- IRL Twitch raid. <laughs> puppy. <laughs> yeah, especially with people in our generation that sort of, didn't do the whole diagnosis thing it's it's really important to know that it's out there you know yeah yeah definitely yeah cool is it cool if i go bathroom yeah yeah, oh, yeah we're about to yeah, wrap up that's, that's, okay. yeah, that's yeah. it yeah yeah, awesome. yeah so yeah that pretty much brings us to the end doesn't it yeah, awesome. i think, Zay, the, I think the Zay Zay is giving us the uh, curtain call but <laughs> yeah thank you everyone for tuning in uh that's live on youtube and twitch today thank you very much to kale for joining us oh my us. pleasure thank you for having me From, i really appreciate uh, it Tabletop Avengers. Yep. I um, loved hearing about the program. Oh, it's awesome. I'm glad to... Yeah. Sa- thank you so much for having me on to share it because it's an important thing to just get more voices out there about it. Absolutely. Yeah, the more we talk about it, the better. Mm-hmm. I think it's... it's Yeah, everyone everyone deserves a voice and, yeah, it's just very cool to hear about it. Amazing initiative. Amazing yeah. Initiative. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, well, um, you know what? It's just nice to be... Like, if you sit down to someone and someone goes, oh, look, I'm like, autistic and you're playing them at Warhammer... If you just know, oh, maybe he's got a light sensitivity, maybe he's got sound sensitivity, suddenly these things become normal things that you think when someone says, I'm autistic, the better it is for us, you know, the more acceptance that naturally happens because there's more knowledge. Yeah. So it's great for, thank you for guys for having me on. That's all right. To be able to talk about it. Yeah, definitely the more, yeah, more knowledge about uh, that type of thing, the better. 
because yeah, you can be more compassionate, more understanding. Yeah, exactly. More awareness, more awareness. Yeah, yeah. Totally. It doesn't help. It doesn't hurt. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. We but, uh, Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, next uh, next episode, episode twelve, will be solely on Twitch. So if you're not on Twitch yet, jump on there now. It's uh, Battle Forge Gaming, all one word. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you guys. Thanks, everyone.